Reynosa. I am the owner and CEO of Puente Cultural Integration and the founder of Business Alianzas. Um, today, we are here to talk about getting your business certified. Um, there are all sorts of different kinds of certifications that you can get. Today, we're going to be specifically talking about uh, minority business enterprises and women business enterprises, um, the certification that uh, is offered through Wayne County. There are multiple other options on how you can be certified, but that is um, what we're going to be talking about today. And so again, my name is Bridget Espinosa, and I am here with my team. So I'd like to introduce to you, um, Jasmine, if you actually, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please. Of course. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jasmine Payan. I'm the um, general manager of the Business Alliances. Thank you so much for being here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And um, for those of us who are joining us on Facebook right now, we are only going to be um, doing the introduction on Facebook. So if you'd like to get more into the weeds and get all of the documents and all of that, uh, we would ask that you join us on Zoom. You can join us on Zoom using the link um, in the chat, in the description, um, or I'm sorry, in the comments and in the description. And it is also a, a bit.ly uh, diagonal forward slash uh, me, Charla, M-I-C-H-A-R-L-A. And um, with that, we're going to begin our presentation. So let me introduce to you Cynthia Mora. Cynthia is, has been the administrative assistant and technical assistant provider uh, for Puente Cultural Integration and Business Alliances for the last three years. I think you just celebrated your, your third anniversary with us. And we are so incredibly proud and thrilled um, to, to have her present her first charla with you today. Um, Cynthia is our go-to girl for everything paperwork. So she is extremely skilled in um, digging in and helping you with all sorts of paperwork, including uh, grant applications and loan applications. She's been doing um, that work for almost her entire time that she's been working with us for the last three years. Um, she started right in the middle of the pandemic um, and helped support over 17 businesses get their PPP loans. Um, I would say she's probably filled out at least 50 grant applications, if not more. And um, she has been working with our businesses to support any kind of red tape and uh, just paperwork in general that that people need to do. So she's helped, uh, you know, additional clients you know, in their specific industries. Uh, we've worked on um, DBE applications and we've also worked on the city of Detroit applications to be certified with the city of Detroit. But today we're specifically going to be talking about um, your MBE and your double WBE, which is a free certification, by the way, through Wayne County. And so we're going to be talking about all the different things that Wayne County offers, but really kind of honing in and focusing on um, getting this minority and women-owned certification. So Cynthia, thank you for taking the time to um, do this today. We're really um, excited to hear your experiences. So can you walk us through this a little bit? Yeah. So thank you so much. And like Bridget was saying, my name is Cynthia Mora. Um, anything, any type of application you guys may need help with, feel free to let us know. We could definitely help you and walk you through the steps. So let me pull up my presentation for today. Um, so some of the benefits of being certified as a woman-owned or uh, minority-owned business is that you have more opportunities to work with bigger corporations. Um, as well as being recognized more. So once you have that certification, you're put like at the top of a list 
um, specifically for having that certification. In general, most corporations look for companies that are certified because they want to be able to help these businesses that are either minority owned or women owned. So it definitely helps you in that area. And it also helps when applying for grants and loans. Um, most, most of the grants are made specifically to help all these women owned and minority owned businesses. So this is just a plus for your business and mostly to make it more known and like I said, put it at the top of the list for many different um, opportunities that are out there. Now, as far as how to apply for the, um, the certifications, um, you would go on to the Wayne County um, website and go to procure to, put, to pay. You have to register for the account um, and these are all your different steps. So you create your account, uh, which like Bridget mentioned, is completely free to register for. They will send you an email to confirm your, your email. Um, and then they send you the applications as well. So the applications are, let me pull those up for you as well. There so, are two applications. Let me just interrupt real quick, Cynthia. So a couple of other things um, that I, I think are worth mentioning. So we have already downloaded all of these applications. Um, so you don't have to wait for them to reply to you to get started. Yeah. So if you are on the Zoom call today, we're going to actually put these applications right in the chat for you so that you can have them um, or we can email them to you. And, um, and in addition, we also support this work. So if you would like to make an appointment with our team in order to go over all this paperwork, because it, it is a lot. Um, the, when we did the last cohort of women-owned businesses, I think it took us about nine hours uh, to get through wasn't it about right because we did three yeah we met about three or four times um and it was about like an hour to two hours that we would sit down each um each meeting and fill out paperwork um it is a lengthy process but it, it's not too long but it is definitely worth it it's not difficult it's just you just got to go through it step by step so yeah we're really experienced with that and if you would like to kind of draft your documents and then come in and make an appointment with Cynthia or myself to go over that, please feel free to do that. This is part of the work that we do through Puente and Business Alianzas. Um, and then the other, other piece of the puzzle too, is that if you do want to do any kind of procurement with the city of Detroit or with Wayne County, so if you actually want to be a, a contractor or a supplier of any goods or services for any of the, the state county or city agencies, um, having a certification is extremely important. And so I think that that is the other piece of the puzzle um, that, um, you know, has, has to happen. So I want to be very transparent. I started this paperwork back in 20, what did I say, Cynthia? 21. 20, I think I started it in 2017 and then picked it up again in 2021. And I haven't gone through the full process because I haven't had a need to, right? Like it's, it's, it's a kind of a, um, a feather in your cap for, you know, your, you can put it in your email, you can put it in your letterhead, you can put it on your website, um, but for me personally, with the work that I do, since I mostly work with small businesses, um, there was just no specific motivation to finish the work. I've got my application 75% finished and just never finished the process. So I'm just being very transparent, <laughs> very honest with you. Uh, Cynthia has tried to get me nailed down like four times in the last three weeks because my goal was to have it um, submitted before this event today. Um, and I, it was just one of those things that I kept putting it off because it wasn't urgent. It's an important goal for me, but it wasn't an urgent goal. And unfortunately, a lot of times the, the putting out the fires takes precedence over, over something of this. So that's the other reason why I would recommend making the appointment, because if you're making the appointment, you're paying for services you want to make sure that you're going to get the most bang for your buck. And so it's another kind of a, a tool to, <laughs> to have somebody who's going to hold you accountable. And Cindy, Cynthia is really, really good at holding you accountable. She'll, she'll keep sending you emails and sending you text messages until you get it done. If you tell her 
that this is your goal. And that's what she's doing for me. So <laughs> I just felt like that was worth, worth mentioning. So um, right now we're going to go over all of this paperwork and we're going to actually go off of the Facebook live. Um, so if you are watching us on Facebook, um, you can leave it open, Cynthia. That's fine. If you are watching us on Facebook right now, um, click on the link to come um, jump into the Zoom call. Or if you're watching this Facebook Live after the fact, make an appointment. Our email is in um, the comments. It is team at puenteci.com. P U E N T E. The letter C is in Charlie, I is in igloo.com. And that will go straight to Cynthia and Jasmine and you can make your appointment with them. So I'm going to uh, log off of Facebook at this time. We are going to continue to record. So for those of you who are on the call, we are going to record this and we can send you this recording. All right. So we're no longer live on Facebook, Cynthia, but we're still just recording. And the only people who are going to see this recording are the people who are on the call. Okay. Right. It's a little bit of the stress off. <laughs> so yeah so like i was saying this is one of the applications so the certification consists of two applications um don't get scared i know the uniform certification is 38 pages long but out of all those 38 pages because you're only applying for the women owned or and or the um minority owned you only have to fill out probably like 10 pages am i is that right bridget That's approximately right, yeah. So and it is we'll talk the about all the other certifications that are available. It is our recommendation that you start with the minority owned or women owned. You can always add those other certifications after the fact, but there's a cost to those and they do expire. So unless you have a real reason to have those other certifications, like you are getting, um, you know, preparing to apply for procurement um, you know, for Wayne County or something along those lines that you want to be a supplier, then it's super worth it because they give you extra points for all your certifications. Um, but for right now, we're just going to be talking about just the, the two. Yeah. So the FEP application, um, this is the one that you will have to fill out completely. Tell us what um, the FEP stands for. So FEP, I for, it's the Fair Employment Practices. Um, so it's pretty much that you're going to treat all of your employees fairly, um, regardless of their race, sex, gender, any of that. Uh, it just pretty much states that you as the employer will be treating everybody fair. There will be no um, favoritism, no, um, I can't hire you because of this, you know, any type of that stuff. So this is pretty much what that application consists of. Um, and like I said, I'm going to just scroll through it kind of quickly to make sure just so you can see what it's like. Um, so this would be the first part that you fill out. Everybody will have to fill this one out. Um, and I believe this one is going to ask you about your employees, uh, which is this part right here. So this one would be if you have any W-2 employees um, and how many of each do you have? So how many are males and females? How many are white, blacks, African-American, Hispanic, uh, Latinx, Asian, American, and so on. So it'll, and it'll go adding up on here as you start placing the numbers and it'll tell you the percentages and everything. Now, if you don't have any W2. Not, um, if you are, if you do not currently have any employees, you can just sign it off and you're good to go. So that's, mm -hmm. helpful. So, you know, a lot of times we, we start this process before we actually have, you know, W2 employees. This does not count if you have 1099 workers or uh, contractors, subcontractors that are working for you. So this is only if you have W-2 employees. One of the questions I did have, and I can't remember the answer to it, Cynthia, maybe we'll have to look this one up. If I remember correctly, I had to fill it out for myself. So you have to, it, you won't leave it blank. If you don't have employees, you'll at least fill it out for yourself. Does that ring a bell to you? Or do we need to look that one up? Uh -huh. We might have to look that one up. I don't really remember what they had told us about that one. Recording because I think I I feel like I felt filled it out for myself. So let me yeah. check on my own paperwork before we help somebody else with that. But that's one of the questions. Um, Jasmine, will you write that question down for us just so that we have that we can ask Wayne County when we uh, redirect. Our contact at, at Wayne County has uh, since retired, I believe, and so we've got a brand new contact there. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, this application, um, I believe that was like the most important. Here again, it'll ask you how many um, have you, how many people have you fired, how many have you hired, and as well as um, race and ethnicity as well. Um, so this is the one that's more complex. It's more easier to fill out. Doesn't require as much information. Um, now the uniform certification application is the one I was mentioning. That's about it's 36, 38 pages long, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 36 pages. And this is the one that you will only have to fill out about 10 pages. Um, like I said, because you're only applying for either the women owned or minority owned, which they're actually the same application. Um, so you just go over, check. yeah, let's go over this really quick. The, the top list there, Cynthia first. Right so here. these are the options that you can apply for. Um, the minority business enterprise or the woman business is a uh, enterprise is a is a declaration and that is a free um, service. I believe also that the veteran enterprise is also a declaration and therefore also free. But if you want to be a Wayne County based enterprise, a targeted growth community enterprise, a small business enterprise or an expanding business enterprise, and there are um, you are either a small business or an expanding business um, based on your financials. Um, each one of those has a fee to it and honestly are only really valuable if you are going to be um, applying for procurement with the county, the state, or the city of Detroit. Um, the city of Detroit also has its own um, certification and again, it's only really uh, valuable if you are applying through the procurement um, department for the city of Detroit. So it's not really valuable in any other aspect. So for the for the amount of time it takes to get through it, I would only recommend it if you are if and you have to apply for it if you want to be a. Um, you know, doing procurement directly with the city. So we have that application as well. And it's something we also have experience um, helping businesses with. Okay, continue my dear. So this pretty much also just gives you more information about the application um, and then what's accepted, what's not accepted, goes over it a little bit more. Um, and this section, this is where it tells you which sections you have to fill out. Um, depending on which certification you are applying for. Um, so once, and it tells you which each application consists of. So section one would be where it tells you which documents you need. Um, and this one is where you select which certification it is you will apply for. Um, so in this case, it would be number seven. Um, like I said, regardless of women owned or minority owned, it's the same one. Um, so you would click on the number seven. Oh, I already clicked on things that so that well we can um you know they okay. just, we can see how mm -hmm. and then so section one is where it will tell you which of the um subheadings it is that you have to fill out. Um so we would go all the way down to number seven, which is for the woman owned and business owned. And as you can see here, we have to fill out section one, two, and five. Um, so we already did section one. We'll continue down to section two, which is this one right here. And this will be information about you and your business. Um, so right here, we would select, again, number seven. And then you would fill out all of your information. Um, so it would be your business name, your EIN number, also known as the uh, FedTex ID, um, address of your business, where it's located, your contact information. Um, and then right here, you'll put when your business was established, when you started working your business, how many employees you have, and um, how like your business, how it operates. So if it's a part-time part business or a full-time business. Um, and then any licenses you might have. So, you know, it might be like your lead abatement license. Um, if you have any like builder's license and any other type of licenses in that matter, you would put them right here and put all of that information. Um, and right here, it asks you about the minorities or women. So for this one, we would put yes, um, and then which ones. So like here are the options that it gives you. 
And that would be the end of section two. So after this, we'll be able to skip all of this, section three, section four. Um, let's see, let me try to get to section five. And section five is just the affidavit. So let me pull that up. So it would be this one here. Um, and then once you get to this part, it's where you're going to declare all of your stuff. So this is also another one um, certifying that you're also going to treat everybody fairly and that all of the answers that you, all the questions you've answered, you've answered them correctly. Um, and then this one, you do have to get notarized. So you will fill all of this out and get it notarized. Um, and you would have to sign you this one as well. Notary, Cynthia? What was that? You happen to know a notary? So um, I am actually an order myself, uh, as well as Bridget and Jasmine. So if you need it, once you get to this part and you need it notarized, let us know and either three of us can help you notarize it. Um, and this one as well. So this one, if it's a partnership, it's an LLC, you'll put all of the owners here. So you can put yourself on here, um, anybody else who owns the business. Um, and that would be the end of this application. So and those I, are the only after going back and relooking at this because it's been a minute since I've looked at it. Why have I not finished this? I think it's all done. <laughs> I, just I don't have know. To admit it. I don't know what it was that I was waiting on. So yeah. just not. So not yeah, it's, it's it pretty complex application. Um, it's just having to sit down and get it all together. Um, I want to say there's also a part that will ask you about the financials. If I, am I not mistaken, Bridget? Yeah, it might have been the piece that I didn't have. Maybe one of the attachments in, in section five or something yeah. like that. Was, um, um, it might be on the other application. This one doesn't fully. Yeah, it might have been it? one of the other certifications that we were. Yeah. Looking. So, like I said, the applications are pretty short. This one is. A longer one, but like I said, you won't have to fill oh, yeah. out all it's of it. Piece, that those receipts might have been what I was trying to do. I think that might have been it. I think I might have been trying to do the small business one as well. Okay, probably yeah, because for the woman owned and and minority owned is it's pretty simple. Um, now let me go to the website, which is this one. This is where you would fill out um the procure to pay. So. I'm going to put this in the chat. Give me a second while, you, while, while you're doing that. I will put it in the chat. So if everyone wants to go ahead and register, um, but you can continue. I'm just going to put it in the chat while you're talking. So once you're on here, you'll go right here where it says, what can we help you find? And you will type in procure it to pay. Yeah, I've never understood why they make it so complicated that you have to search for it. It's not something that comes up. And if you don't remember exactly how to do it. Yeah. That's what I was wondering as well. I, you know, I don't be ever understood that one. They just don't have a button somewhere, but right. here I'm going to put it right in the chat. So, so those of you who are on the zoom call, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put what came up for me. I don't know if it's going to help you, but I'm going to also put the waynecounty.com. So go ahead and, and follow through, Cynthia. Once we're here, we're going to go to procure to pay registration. And then it's going to explain to you the whole process of the registration. I've never personally done it myself, um, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty simple to do it. Uh, when you did it, Bridget, was it easier for you? That was very, very simple. It was, you know, just a, a very short process. Okay. So yeah, so it'll pretty much from what it says on here, it's going to ask you about your business once again. Um, so all of the contact information, the address, phone, um, your EIN, any certifications you might have, if you do have any at this moment. Um, and then we can just go ahead and click continue with registration. And they do have a tutorial here. So in case you need any help with it, it'll help you on there. Or we can also help you when you're doing it. Um, and it's pretty much pretty basic. So your company name, EIN number, um, which is the same tax ID. Um, if you have a DUNS number, your personal information. Oh, and that then was your 
Yes, the Duns. I remember that the Duns number um, was an issue for some of our our people, and that was something else that we can support. So, if anybody does not currently have a Duns number, um, you can uh, you can get you can get started without it. You can see that it doesn't have an asterisk. Um, but mm -hmm. it is something you absolutely should have if you are a formal business, um, because it's basically the, for those of you who don't know what the Duns is, the Duns number is essentially like your um, your credit. It's the credit reporting agency. So if you have any um, any accounts under your business name as opposed to your real name. Um, your legal name, you can, that will help your credit rating for the business. So if you, um, you know, take out a small loan, like let's say you go to, you know, Apple and you buy a MacBook for your business, do it under the business name and include your Dunn's number. And that will help to raise your credit score for the business so that you can access capital at a later date. So the Dun Duns is the agency that reports your credit score. So. And so once we have all of that information, this is where you can create your login. So it would be your email and your password. Um, and it and does require you to change it periodically. I just logged into my account and I haven't probably been logged into it for about a year. And it, um, it did ask me to change my password. So I actually just logged into the actual portal. So if you want, Cynthia, I can show that portion of it. Mm -hmm. Let me stop sharing and go ahead. Give me one second. To... And in the meantime, I'm going to put the applications um, in the chat. Uh, so you guys can download them from there. I believe we had a, a Google folder. Do you want to just share that? Uh, yeah. I'll at the look. I thought that that had the rec original recording that we did with Wayne County. That was more workshoppy. All right. So I've not been in this page in over a year. So I'm just going to take a look at what it has here. So um, when you apply when you ask them, you have to tell them what you are applying for. So apparently I was going to apply for the DVE. I needed the FEP, they will send you that. And then the uniform application looks like it may have changed actually, Cynthia, hold on a second. The one that we have says 2016, doesn't it? Um, let me double check that for you really quick. It's, um, it does not say. I'm gonna download this one really quick just to make sure. They don't make it easy on you. The, the actual process is not, so does that look like it's the same? Yeah, it looks like it's the same as it was. Yeah. yeah. I think, all right, just wanted to double check. Nothing had changed. Yeah, so it looks like I had attempted to do these other two, and that's why I had never got up, filled out my application. So I am just going to fill out the minority-owned, business women-owned. Um, and for uh, governmental purposes, so that everyone understands, women are considered minority regardless of their race. Um, and so even though I am a white woman, my business is still considered to be a minority owned business because I am a woman. So um, that's an important, important thing to understand. I'm going back to the portal here. So this is where you can, you're going to manage everything. Um, the reason they did it here was because the whole purpose of this original, originally the whole purpose of this certification was for government procurement. Um, it has now become more of a, um, like I said, kind of a feather in your cap, so to speak, um, you know, that you can put it in your signature line. Um, and I know, you know, like Karen, 
um, you're a perfect example of somebody who's working with corporate procurement. Um, have they asked you if you have this certification? Has that been on any of the applications that you've noticed? No. Okay. That's interesting because I we we were thinking that the corp corporate would probably like that piece of it too. So, and then this would be if you had any contracts or invoices with the county itself. So I think at this point, I believe that we have covered everything that we wanted mm -hmm. to cover today. So we're going to end our recording and then um, we will... Um,